This is an intro to Jekyll Collections. First of all, let's go over when you should use collections. Ben Boulder has a great overview on his blog called Explain Like I'm 5 Jekyll Collections. In this post, Ben has a diagram of when you should use a post, page, or collection in Jekyll. So the first question is, can the things be logically grouped? If they can't, then use pages. If they can, then can they be grouped by their date? An example of this would be blog posts. Each post has the date it was posted. And in this case, you would want to use Jekyll posts. Um, but if they can't be grouped by date, then collections are the answer. Let's move on to an example. So here we have a fictional bakery store uh, with a page with cookies on it. Each cookie has a title, an image, and content about that cookie. You could create this as an HTML page and just repeat the structure for each cookie. But every time you have this sort of repetition, it's going to be a lot easier to manage with a collection. Defining collections happens in underscore config.yaml. First we need to add collections and then under collections we can define the different collections we want on the site. In this case we're only going to have one called cookies. The next step is to create a directory called underscore and then the collection name. So in this case it would be underscore cookies. And you can see I've already added a few markdown files with different cookies. Let's just open one of these up and have a look at the structure. So afghan.md has front matter at the top, defining a title and a path to the image of that cookie. And then it has content and markdown below that. Chocolate chip is exactly the same structure. And so is ginger nut. Now we need to print out all these cookies in cookies.html. So let's go over to that page. And you can see I have some front matter at the top just defining the layout and the page title. Jekyll makes documents inside a collection available to you at site.thecollectionName. So here we have site.cookies, which we're iterating over. For each item, we're printing out data from the front matter. So here's the image path and the title um, as an alt tag and as part of the H2. And then we're outputting the content as well. And Jekyll's automatically gonna convert that markdown to HTML. Remember each time you change underscore config.yaml, you need to restart your Jekyll server for the changes to take effect. Now I have all the cookies printed out on this page. Let's change the structure a little bit. Instead of having all the cookies and content on one page, let's just have the cookie title, which links to more information about that cookie. Back to underscore config.yaml, and we need to add output true to this collection. And what that does is generates a page for each item in the collection. Over to cookies.html. I'll just get rid of some of these items, like we don't need the image anymore. Uh, we don't need the content. And we're gonna add an A tag. This A tag is gonna point to the generated page for this collection item. And we get that by going to the collection.url. What's each page gonna look like? Well, we can use a layout for that. Here I have a layout for cookie, and it has a similar structure to what we saw before. So it has an image, a title, and the content. And then in each collection item, we just need to specify that layout. My cookies page now has a list of links to different cookies. And if I click on them, it takes me to a new page with information about that cookie.
So that's how you use collections in Jekyll. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.